Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing to you Oxen Free 2 Lost Signals for the Nintendo Switch. I was a pretty big fan of the original Oxen Free, even though it was a walking simulator and the paths you walked could be very long and very tedious. I thought it had a very promising narrative, and it was neat to be able to use my choices to affect the outcome. I also really liked the voice acting. As much high respect as I have for actors that do English dubs for most of the games that I play, there's something about natural English that was written in English first that just covers a lot more realism to it. And most of that carries over to Oxenfree 2. In fact, it's taken them about seven years to create this follow-up, and probably even longer because of the numerous delays. So was it worth the excruciatingly long wait to possibly be the conclusion of the entire series? Yes and no. The gameplay is more or less exactly the same as the original Oxenfree. It's still a walking simulator, and you still walk along very narrow paths and choose your responses to conversations that seem to go on for a really long time. And depending on what you say in the conversations, it'll affect how the characters treat you, sometimes whether they'll live or die, and what endings you'll get. So it has a decent amount of replay value, but not as much as I would like, because games like Zero Escape would introduce things like flowcharts that you could quickly jump to another decision to see what would have happened, or in the case of, say, Life is Strange 2, you could just jump to a particular chapter. This game has nothing of the sort. If you want to see an alternate outcome for your choices, you have to create a whole new save file. And to my knowledge, this game only has an autosave, so you can't cheese the save system by saving in place, then quitting, and then copying to another save file. You really have to commit to doing the whole journey. You still have a radio to tune into various frequencies. Some of them just give you random old radio channels to listen to, but oftentimes there will be puzzles that involve you to discover which uh, station will give you the most HD rumble. And so the HD rumble is used really well here to help you know which frequency to tune into. One thing that's new to this game is that you also have a walkie-talkie that allows you to communicate with various people. These are some blink-and-you-miss-it type of scenarios, as when I looked up a walkthrough online to try to figure out how to explain the story, there was an entire character that I didn't even know existed, because you have to do a lot of experimentation with the radio to be able to discover some of these people. Others I just happened to barely stumble along, and it was thanks to the notebook that I was able to keep track of them. Oxenfree 2 has quite a variety of quality of life features that make it, for the most part, much more accessible and much easier to navigate than the original Oxenfree. The map is much, much, much more detailed than the original map. It's still not perfect. There's a lot more caves in this game, and I feel like that slightly makes the navigation a little bit more confusing, especially when you get a loading screen between each area. But it is overall much more convenient, as the new protagonist, Riley, will mark points of interest on the map and sometimes give some witty commentary on what happened in that area. And on the right side of the screen, you have a notebook that'll display progress markers of maybe a character that you could help, or something to keep in mind for your quest. So it's not just the usual get to the spot and do something. You actually have a description of what your objectives are so that you can follow along with the story easier. I know this is something that not much of you will care about, but I also appreciate how there are additional options in the options menu, such as actually being able to turn off the voices, which was something that I couldn't do in my original Oxenfree re-review, so that's a nice touch. You can make the font bigger. You even have an option to look at content warnings to make sure that this game isn't too disturbing for you. But as far as is it a worthy follow-up to Oxenfree, I would have to say in some cases yes, but in some cases no. On one hand, I do feel like it 
heavily relies on you playing the first oxen free to fully understand what's going on as at first it seems like a standalone game but as it ramps up toward the end the connections to the previous game's event become more and more obvious to the point where i'm pretty sure you're going to be totally clueless if you've never played the original i really liked some of the nostalgic throwbacks that the game had to offer especially around the finale. Nostalgia is a big deal for me. I love being able to revisit previous games or previous experiences that I had a good time with. One thing that I think is a little bit of a disappointment in the sequel is that it's not as clear what the resolutions are. Like in the original Oxenfree, they pretty much just flat out told you like, hey, this character was unhappy, this character was unhappy, this happened. Whereas it's a bit more cryptic this time around either that or I'm just not very good at reading between the lines but it felt like there were a lot more unanswered mysteries and a lot more stuff that was left up to your imagination I also feel like there's also not as much character interactions as there was in the previous game Riley spends most of her time in the company of Jacob who is her partner that's helping her put transmitters around Kamina Island. And I feel like while he's a good conversation partner, he's pretty much the only one you have, unless if you tune into the radio stations, which are way more infrequent than I would have liked. So you are kind of stuck in his company for like 95% of the game, which, you know, isn't a deal breaker, but in the original Oxen Free, you had a whole group of teenagers that you would mix and match your interactions with and at one point you could even choose who accompanied you on the journey to give it some semblance of non-linearity. One thing I will praise the cast of characters in this game for is that most of them are a lot older than teenagers and so they have kind of a wisdom of the ages type of feeling that was sorely missing from the original cast. They're not just there to quote be stupid and have a good time, they actually are serious about their jobs and their resolutions and they've had more time to think about like, yeah, we've come pretty far since we were teenagers and when they encounter other teenagers, they're like, oh boy, these guys are so immature. And it's very nice to see, especially as people that might have been teenagers during the time of Oxenfree are probably full-fledged adults by now and so they can reflect on their own maturity and how far that's come. So that's a really nice twist. I was a bit uh, thrown off by Riley's voice at first because I thought she would be so much younger based on the concept art and also the name Riley. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that feels like a more modern type name. But I did really like her inflection. She comes across as kind of a tough girl type of persona, but like secretly has a very caring heart underneath. And I know that's a tired and true cliche, but she doesn't come across as a Mary Sue. She does come across like, you know, she's learned from her years of experience, but still makes mistakes. And at one point she even puts on the map, that was an embarrassing mistake. Don't do that again. So while the character interactions aren't quite as good as they were in the original game, it's a bit more cryptic as to what the resolution is, and it doesn't feel as satisfying when you have the glitchy moments, but at the same time, it's also much more accessible, and it is really nice to see some loose ends from the original game cleared up. Now, one thing I should warn you about, just in case you jump into this game first, which I hope you don't, but just in case you're one of those people that likes to play games out of order, both Oxen Free games are known for a lot of jump scares and intentional glitching on the game. You will see some static appear, things will just pop up out of nowhere, and you might even think your game is broken. So if you're the type of person that is, say, epileptic, or get seizures, I think that's the same thing, you probably won't want to play this game because they do seem to come completely out of nowhere and they can be pretty darn frequent. There are also characters whose voices will get louder and quieter seemingly out of nowhere as well, which it makes sense if you know what the narrative is trying to say, but to people that are overly sensitive, you probably aren't going to enjoy this experience.
While I do think the long delay means that it's a pretty well-polished game, there are definitely a lot of things that speed things along, especially the fact that you can go to a new area and the conversation will continue after the loading screen. That's a very nice touch that you're not interrupting people if you go too quickly. But there was still one moment where the game slipped up, and it was I was trying to get to a new area, and the loading screen just went on for so long that I thought my game had crashed. So I exited out the game and came back, and then I was in the next area, so I was totally fine. I think it's a result of the game's really brilliant autosave system, although that brings up another little glitch, as there was one point where the autosave icon stayed on screen for a really long time, and I feel like that was probably also a bug. But thankfully, past that one glitch, the game ran really smoothly, except for the times where the story demanded that it didn't. So it's a very well-polished game. I definitely think the delay was worth it. But I think fans that liked the clarity and the stupid teenage interactions of the previous game might be a bit disappointed by the much more limited cast this time around. They also might not like how the story resolves itself. But I think if you liked Oxenfree enough, it's just more of the same of that kind of genre. I personally am in the camp where I think I like the original Oxenfree more, but I like the quality of life improvements in the sequel. So this is more enjoyable to play, but the original game had a more satisfying narrative payoff. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Again, I read all of the comments and respond to most of them, so please don't be afraid of sharing your thoughts. Special thanks to my patrons Matthew Rakowski, Sploon Ghost, Splatcat, and Scooter Doodles for their financial contributions. And until the next time, remember to keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye!